Hey guys, thank you for joining me as we are here to uh, set our minds on things above. Uh, so if you're not already there with me, uh, I'll encourage you to open to the book of Ephesians. We'll be looking at chapter 4, verses 17 to 24. Ephesians 4, 17 to 24. Uh, this evening, what I really want us to uh, be looking at is how um, our body acts on the things that uh, our mind, uh, our minds dwell on. Um, the things that we are filling up in our mind um, cause us to uh, talk a certain way and to behave a certain way. And so that's what I want us to look at tonight. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 24. It says, Therefore I say this and testify in the Lord. You should no longer live as the Gentiles live, in the futility of their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, and because of the hardness of their hearts. They became callous and gave themselves over to promiscuity, for the practice of every kind of, e of impurity, with a desire for more and more. But that is not how you came to know Christ, assuming you heard about him and were taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. To take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness and righteousness and purity of the truth. So the first thing I want us to look at is how this section begins with the word therefore. Um, anytime you see a therefore, I would encourage you to ask yourself, what is it there for? Uh, because therefore typically means in conclusion. And so just before this, um, uh, maybe up, back up to verse 11, um, it's hard to really find a breaking point there, but about at verses 11 to 16, uh, Paul is writing about how um, about how we are to be grounded in faith and in knowledge, and uh, and trying to build up or strengthen the body of Christ, um, trying to you know strengthen his church and uh, that we would be healthy, um, that we'd be working together um, in spirit and truth and faith and love and knowledge and understanding and wisdom, and so uh, we need to be working together as the body of Christ. And then he says, therefore I say this and testify in the Lord. Uh, this is according to the Lord. It's interesting to note here that whether he's talking about the Gentiles and how they live a sinful life or how we have come to know Christ and we are trying to live a godly life, over and over again he mentions how things start in the mind, they move to the heart, and then they move to the actions. Um, so a lot of the times it'll start in the mind, work its way into the heart, or the heart and mind work together. I don't know if it, if I should say mind then heart. However you want to look at that, I'll leave you to I'll leave that up to you to discern that. Um, but the mind and heart work together a lot. And so, uh, you know, you see in verse seventeen he uses the word thoughts. Verse eighteen you see understanding and ignorance. Verse twenty uh, we see the word know. Um, that is K N O W to know Christ. Um, twenty one we see the word taught. Uh, twenty three we see the word minds and the spirit of your minds. And so um, a lot of our actions, all of our actions rather, um, start in our mind and in our heart. Um, and we act on the things that we dwell on, that uh, what are, is uh, going on in our minds and our hearts. And, uh, and that's what we're going to act on. And so what you're filling your mind up with uh, will come out in your actions. Um, and so if, uh, you know, if you're uh, listening to certain music that, or watching certain movies that have a bunch of cussing in it, um, you know, maybe rather than reading your Bible a lot, then chances are you're going to use bad words, use filthy language, um, rather than, uh, you know, speaking about, you know, Bible things and godly things. Um, that's just one example of many. Um, but whatever you are involving yourself in, whatever you're filling your mind up with, uh, will come out in your actions, um, or you will have to try a lot harder to stop those things before they happen anyway. But if we're reading scriptures, if we're praying, if we're talking about spiritual things with others, those things that we're filling our mind up with are just continually going to come out more and more and more. And so, um, and so, yeah, so I just want to encourage all of us to, to be focused on spiritual things, um, really be trying to fill up our minds and our hearts with, uh, with things of a godly nature, um, and to, uh, um, you know, to be focused on things above, to be looking to God, uh, you know, looking to Jesus and his teachings and what the apostles taught, um, and, and even the Old Testament, you know, of course, um, there's a lot of wisdom to gain from the Old Testament. Um, I think it's uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 4, that says that it's there for our learning. Um, and speaking of, of Romans, uh, over in Romans 12, uh, I'll just conclude with this. I think Romans 12, 2 is a fitting conclusion, um, just to sum all this up um, in the way that we... Um, we think and the way that we behave. 
Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this age, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So I just encourage you, be renewing your mind. Get your uh, mind off of uh, sinful things and get your mind on spiritual things and, uh, you know, good, godly things. Renew your mind. And I'm saying that for me as well. And so uh, thank you so much for uh, checking this out. Um, if you have any uh, you know, comments or questions or disagreements, uh, please let me know. I always encourage all those things. Uh, I want to have open discussion with you guys. So uh, thank you so much for your uh, time and attention. And uh, until we meet again, love you.